Are portals hard to make in VR? Ugh, a bit burnt. The answer is complex. To see why, we need to go back a few weeks. It was the day I was going to restart work on my VR game, and I was already late. I was so glad I dressed the night before. I collected my morning tea from my teas maid, which every British person receives on their 18th birthday by the way, and opened up my wardrobe of lost and forgotten things, searching around for the right box. Ah, I think it's this one. It was time to revisit the Nexus. Last time, I created a very basic alchemist's laboratory. Let's be honest, it looks like my singing voice sounds, but it doesn't matter because right now, all we're interested in is making the first major game mechanic. A time portal. My game is all about traveling through time to solve puzzles and trying to escape. Things you do in the past affect the future. And to move between time periods, I wanted to create a time portal that you could look through so you could see into the different time periods. But there was one big question. How do you create portals in Unity? Because I don't know. Well, first I needed a plan, so I wrote up my board of doing. And then I started to brainstorm. So about a year ago, I did see a video essay on portals, and I remember a few things. So I'm going to create a non-VR portal first, and then expand it to use the headset. Okay, so let's say we have a portal called A here, and a portal called B here. Lovely. Now, let's put in two cameras, one which shows what the player sees next to portal A, and another which is at the same relative distance to portal B. The portal camera is going to project what it sees onto portal A to create the illusion, moving when the player does to keep things in sync. When the player goes through portal A, it will teleport them over instantaneously to portal B. Now to project what the portal camera sees onto portal A, I needed to use a render texture, which is often used in video games to create security footage. Creating the render texture was quite easy, but it didn't look right. Everything was distorted. I tried lots and lots of different ideas, like changing the scale of the camera image, changing the field of view, and so on. I was getting despondent at the lack of progress. I simply did not have the experience to get this to work. I needed help. Like, and bear with me on this, suppose you wanted to make cookies. Oh, nanny. <sighs> you might know the ingredients you need, but you don't know the recipe, so you stumble around for a bit, getting unexpected results. Then you realise there's no way to work this out on your own. Sobering thought. So I am indebted to a Lim Ding Wen, whose tutorial on making portals in Unity was exceptional. The tutorial showed me I was on the right lines, but I was missing one big thing. I needed to create my own shader. Shaders are programs that run on the GPU. They help to define the colour and transparency of pixels on the screen. When you create a material in Unity, you're actually creating a version of a shader with specific inputs, like a colour or a texture. So how does a shader work? Well, let's imagine that we had a simple standard object like a rhino. We know from a previous video that we can paint the rhino with colours to make it look more realistic. This paint can be unwrapped from the rhino into a flat plane, and we can call this a texture. A shader can take the texture and determine how to display it on an object on the screen. I can do all sorts of things. I can have an average rhino, I can invert the colours to make him look like he's from a Tim Burton film, or I could make him look like he's made of water. So what I was missing was a custom shader which converted what the portal camera sees into a screen space texture. Oh, so many words. Normally, when you are in the scene, a texture on an object will look different depending on the direction you look at it from. But with a screen space texture, the texture looks the same regardless of the direction. It just matters where on the screen the object is. So, by mapping the render texture to a screen space texture in the shader, and applying that material to the portal, I get this. 
Now we're cooking. Okay, looking good. But if the portals are too close together, there are some places where the portal will go black. It's more obvious in the tutorial version. It happens when the portal camera is looking directly at the portal it is trying to project to. The solution to this? Well, we need to put the near plane of the portal camera's view frustum in line with the destination portal. Okay, near plane, view frustum. What am I talking about? Well, to explain this, I have to show you how an object in the scene makes it onto the screen. And to do that, let me introduce you to Cameron. This is Cameron, the camera. And this is Patty, the potato. Patty needs a new photo for her pass for the tuba network. She's very sweet, doesn't beat around the bush. I've always rooted for her. Anyway, let's have a look at Cameron and Patty together. Cameron is here and Patty is there. We can define a point somewhere else in the scene as the origin, and this means we can determine where Cameron and Patty are in relation to this. This is called world space. Now Cameron, are you ready to take Patty's photo? Okay then. Patty is a small distance away from Cameron. If we now define a second origin at Cameron's position, we could say that Patty has these coordinates relative to Cameron. This is where Patty is from Cameron's point of view, and this is called view space. Now, as much as he wants to, Cameron can't see everything around him. Mm. Instead, his field of view is restricted and he can only see things within this pyramid. Practically though, we usually want to ignore things really close or really far away, so we cut off the top and bottom of the pyramid, creating what's called a frustum. Ah! The closest side is called the near plane. Ah, stop it! Only objects past this plane will appear in the image. This is called clip space because objects are clipped out of view. Once we know where the camera is and where the object is in the world, we can see if the object is in the view frustum by multiplying its coordinates by different matrices. Arr, here there be maths. But we won't go into the maths today. Arr, why do I bother? No one ever listens to post-it note Pete. You go into the pirate life expecting a little bit of maths every now and then and they just take it away from you. Arr, where is the grog? Patty was very happy with her photo. She uses her tuba network pass to turn it at her Swedish friend Murphy's house with her little spuds in tow. Anyway, back to the problem of the misbehaving portal. Now we know about the frustum, we need to shift the near plane to always be in line with the destination portal using something called an oblique matrix. Then the portal camera doesn't render its own portal. That's looking pretty good. Now, Ah, that's better. What about the actual teleportation? Well, comparatively, this is actually quite easy. We put box colliders on the player and on portal A, and when the player collides with the portal, the player's position is translated to be in line with portal B. Let's just not worry about the details today. And this is the final result, which I think looks excellent. But uh, I'm going to cook another batch. I've got something that's going to add a whole new dimension. Indeed, it's time to tackle the same thing, but in VR. With the headset on, I saw that there were some immediate challenges. First, the portal was only visible for the left eye and transparent for the other. And secondly, it looked like my left eye had had a few too many. I trawled through the forums looking for clues, piecing together sentence fragments, offhand suggestions and ideas to understand what to do. Before, we had a single camera for the player and a camera for the portal. Whatever the portal camera sees is projected onto the portal, but now the VR headset has two eyes, each seeing something slightly different. So to replicate what someone with a headset would see at the portal location, we now need to have two portal cameras, a left and right eye. The frustums of the VR eyes are copied to the portal cameras so that everything matches. Okay, so the left eye is looking a little better, but the right eye still doesn't show anything. To fix this, we have to revisit our shaders again. Our portal shader currently takes a render texture and displays it, but now we have two cameras for the left and right eye, each outputting their own render texture. 
we need to show the left eye texture to the left eye and the right eye texture to the right eye. Fortunately, Unity comes with a property called the Stereo Eye Index which can help. We can simply put this in and it starts outputting what we want. This was the result. It might look okay to you on screen, but have a look at the edges here. They don't match up properly. They just didn't look right with the headset on. I was determined to fix the issue. Every day, I would make myself some tea, read papers, open numerous forum posts, try out new things, learn and learn and learn. But I got no closer for six weeks. I just have to accept that I just don't yet have the knowledge, the intuition to solve these problems in Unity or computer graphics. It's annoying. It will come. But for now, I just have to realise that sometimes you're in over your head and no amount of frustration is going to help with that. So when we ask the question, Are portals hard to make in VR? Ugh, a bit burnt. The answer is complex. And you know what else is complex? This thing took me ages to do. Or maybe you want to watch more about the VR game. Maybe that's more your cup of tea. In which case, click here. Either way, I'm going to go and study more Matrix Maths. Ah, good. <laughs>